Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Is uh, Vietnamese translation uh, ready? Oh, yeah, okay. I'm waiting for a translation. Okay. Well, good morning, everyone. Okay. Thank you all for coming. Well, first of all, uh, real times are hard, and so please be careful. Uh, you need to be a lot more careful nowadays. In particular, uh, I received uh, spam calls and uh, uh, scam calls every single day. Uh, like they pretend to be from the bank, they pretend to send you fake messages and texts and so forth. Uh, be careful. Uh, hello, how are you? Uh, so don't fall for those things. Uh, ignore them, don't answer to them. Uh, if, uh, you know, the, 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 there's so much uh, scammers out, so many scamming, so, so many sc scammers out there that you need to be careful. Don't talk to strangers, don't answer those things, okay? You have to be more careful. Uh, our people have been scammed recently. Uh, I'm, I'm the worst offender. I was scammed by a K Korean artist. Uh, <laughs> The to a tune of a lot of money is very embarrassing. And so uh, people are desperate right now. They will go to extreme to cheat us, uh, to make a living. You can hardly blame them. And the times are hard to support the families, uh, whatever they need to do, whatever it takes, they claim. Mm. Okay? And so please be careful. Uh, uh, and furthermore, also, uh, is similarly, uh, people are very, very uh, angry nowadays. And therefore, uh, be uh, careful and protect yourself. Uh, in particular, you know, I re recently, for example, they even uh, go to gas stations and steal uh, gas. Uh, they well, they would uh, take a van and they have a, an opening in the floor and they park right over uh, the, uh, uh, the hole where the gas truck uh, fill up the, the gas stations and then break in easily, fairly easily, and then pump it out. And we, so the gas stations are actually losing tens of thousands of dollars. Pretty serious. And then it's very alarming is that 
They even take a drill and drill a hole into your gas tank. They crawl underneath. They drill a hole into your gas tank, and then they collect the gas. Okay, and uh, a couple of funny situations. Number one, uh, in one case, this person reported it, and uh, there were only two gallons of gas. <laughs> so <laughs> they stole two gallons of gas, and would cost this person fifteen hundred dollars to replace the gas tank. First of all, okay. And another case, uh, they uh, uh, caught fire, so they got in trouble themselves. Okay, so you are extremely careful. Do not park outside. You can help it. You know, park inside or uh, secure your cars because they also steal catalytic converters and so forth. It's crazy nowadays, and they break into my house and so forth. Uh, you never know. Okay, so please be careful, be secure, be safe, and so forth. Okay, and uh, when you travel, and I have some of my disciples, uh, dear pious disciples who are who travel, who plan to travel abroad, uh, uh, I fail to see what's so interesting about you know uh, uh, traveling to. Wilderness areas where you can get, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, glacier avalanches and stuff like that. Who's going to save you? Who's going to help you? I don't get it, you know. Can you get something and find something else for f- you know, safer for fun or something? What is the matter with you? Don't you know that that's very dangerous? You cannot. Take chances like that. In a particular, uh, I have someone who's planning to, I'm too late to change plans now, someone who's planning to wagon around Africa. Oh my God, what is the matter with you? I would never go there. It's too hard. It's, uh, you know, it's, uh, I won't even go to India for that matter. India for us is like a pilgrimage for most monks and nuns. I still refuse to go to India because, you know, uh, 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 you have all sorts of issues there. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's just not safe. You have to be careful. Since, since you are, and, and plus, even I even remind my own monks and nuns, when they drive the cars away from the temple, they're exposed because we're under attack. Uh, what we're doing is uh, we're sort of like a vanguard, a Mahayana, American Vahayana, and therefore we get a lot of obstruction, we get a lot of attention from our, you know, from the... Uh, the uh, demon side, the evil side, okay? We are a thorn on their side, and therefore they're watching us 24 hours a day to harm us. So it's very, very dangerous, especially those of you who are important to me. Uh, you're helping out, and you're a key part of uh, our work. Uh, be careful. What you do is that if you worry especially about yourself, your family, and so forth, when you never you drive, you get out of the house, okay? Recite Medicine Master Buddha's name. Please do that, okay? Uh, this is uh, how you get some protection for yourself. Yao shi ru lai, yao shi ru lai. Please do it constantly. I do that because it's very dangerous nowadays. People are crazy. People are desperate. Yeah. Okay? So... Uh, and of course, uh, the master old monk, oh, thank you, uh, would uh, tell you to recite one yin, okay? Uh, what's the difference, the two things? Uh, Medicine Master Buddha is um, more of a overall preventative, okay? Whereas one yin is for more, for more for emergencies. If you are in pain, you are really under, uh, in danger right now. Call one yin, that should be the most uh, common uh, response, re- reflex response. But in general, if you're normal, under normal conditions, recite Yao Shi Ru Lai constantly when you're outside. Okay? That's what Master Shi taught us as well. Huh? 
But now it's, it's so appropriate for this day and age where it is uh, so dangerous. The key, they target the Asians, they target you know, uh, uh, people who wear nice watches, Rolexes. <laughs> <laughs> they attack you in daylight, you know. It's so crazy nowadays. Hmm? Be careful. Hmm? If especially you drive a nice car and so forth, uh, they target you, you know, they keep an eye on you. Hmm? It's just too crazy. Okay? So be, be careful, recite Yao Shu like constantly, if you, if you will. Okay? Uh, all right. Anyone has any questions or any comments or any uh, uh, thing that I like to discuss? Hmm. Okay. If not, then we uh, can uh, talk about. Uh, okay. Uh, we have, for example, we lost uh, Xian Ren, who is now Mi Fan who did an excellent job taking care of the children's program here in Southern California. Uh, and uh, uh, she's so good with kids. She excels at, you know, uh, working with kids. We have no one that good, okay, to tell you the truth. And I don't know what to do. This, uh, this is a, she's sorely missed in that respect. Uh, uh, the translation, Ahong is coming up to speed, you know, he's, uh, we'll give him another year or so, okay? It's just like uh, me fine when she first started. That's why, where uh, ah, uh, Ahong is, is, uh, uh, Ahong is, is uh, where he is right now, and uh, naturally he'll improve. In fact, since he first started uh, about a couple of weeks ago, he went from eighth samadhi to first stage ahat already, already, like I predicted. Yeah. And I confirmed it the other day. Yeah, I confirmed the other day. I yelled at him. And before, when I yelled at him, he would be terrified. The other day, I yelled at him in front of everyone. is okay, so what is this old man talking about? <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, oh, well, I'm getting too old, I guess. So, uh, okay, so, um, so I don't know. Do you have any suggestions? Anyone would like to step into Mifan's program? Huh? Mifan is so good doing that. Uh, I really, you know, she smiles and she's sweet. She loves children. Uh, I don't. Uh, <laughs> So I really struggle with this. Huh? What do we do? Huh? Anyone would like to volunteer? I hope you'd like to volunteer to do children's program. It's not like you're not busy enough. Huh? <laughs> and just spoil them. Smile at them, you know? Huh? They're cute. Children are cute. Yeah, they're lovely. Yeah? Just... Hmm. Play with them. Who else can do it? Hmm? Uh, you, you want to do children, you have to smile more. That's all. <laughs> yes, one. It's hard to work with the adults and the children at the same time. You cannot work adults and children at the same time? Not, not that I can't, but it's just harder. Because then I can't hear the adults talking. But the that's the whole point. You don't need to hear those talking. <laughs> and that's, whole, that's the advantage. And it's supposed to be difficult. Chan cultivation, the way, the style we do it, is supposed to be difficult. It's not supposed to be easy. That's why you progress a lot faster than all the other programs. You notice that? Even the children. And making progress because they're willing to work harder. They're willing to do something difficult. Uh, we're asking you in this Chan training program here uh, to do something as difficult for you to do. That's why, how you improve. Okay? You cannot improve unless you struggle. Okay? What is the word for struggle? 
This is a secret in our program. For example, you go typically, you go to any other program where they teach you meditation. What do they stress? They stress oh, how pleasant it is, how good you feel. Okay? We don't do that. We ask you to do something that makes you feel pain. Okay? Uh, that, uh, that's uh, very challenging for you. We just do the exact opposite. It's not supposed to be easy. It's supposed to be hard. Okay? And that's why all the other places, you will uh, plateau out the rest of your life. You rarely make progress. Whereas for us, uh, the secret about, let me share you a secret about why you've been progressing so quickly. Okay? Uh, it's because uh, it's just... Too many of you are in the formless realms now, and you know I'm looking at a bunch of you like being clustered in the Ahad range and as well. So you know, uh, uh, it's just too many of you. Uh, and this uh, it it's, um, creates a lot of pressure. You know, when you go to other temples, you know, it create a lot of pressure. It's on the monks and nuns, eh? unless uh, unless uh, you don't care for that, you just uh, go there, oh, just because you want to be away from me. <laughs> uh, 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 these people, so much resentment. <laughs> so what's the secret? The secret of your progress, okay, uh, is. Because uh, you struggle and you keep on, you keep at it. You don't back down. And what's another word for that? I like to use the word struggle, but in Buddhism, uh, the, the Chinese, uh, they're a lot more poetic, elegant, classy, if you will. What word did they use? Hmm? Anyone knows? Okay. If meditation, if cultivation is pleasant and you're not afflicted at all, you're not going to make progress. I assure you. Okay. Or the progress you make will be, will be measured by decades, by years. Okay, that Ahong here, when he first started, he was very, very afflicted, and he, he plateaued at six, and then he got out, and then he lost some when he came back here. Uh, and then, you know, and then he, he and then began to improve gradually again. Once you are in a formless realm, the improvement is natural. The progression is natural, because of our system, okay? Mm. But, uh, but unless, unless, and I've seen a lot of people, like newcomers, they struggle a lot, uh, and yet they, and that's why they progress very quickly. And what is, uh, what is the Buddhist word for that? Struggle? Uh, hmm? Pain. What is it? Yes, sir, number three. Thank you, Master. Uh, suffering? Not su Yes, suffering, but there is a, they have a much more, this is a key, this is a secret about Chan that we know we have the recipe, okay? And this is one of the secrets of Chan that most Chan masters uh, understand, okay? Unless you understand this, you cannot train people. And this is why when people, uh, when people uh, don't emphasize, the teachers don't, don't emphasize their challenges and so forth, the students cannot progress at all. Because they don't understand. That's why they have to go to pleasant, smiling, and so forth. And that's uh, a ride in the park, you know, uh, 
uh, they the beach kind of thing, and the fun thing, okay, pleasant thing, happy thing, okay. That's because they don't know how to train Chan. That's how they have to resort to worldly, uh, worldly enticements. Yes, nine. Master, I'm not sure of the word, but it, to me, it's like to reach the breaking point. Reach the breaking point. Uh huh. Very good. Okay. Excellent. What else? The Chinese, uh, the Buddhist, has a term here that's uh, that is so precise, and it's the secret of Chan training. Hmm? Ah Hong, you know what that is? What have you done recently that you haven't done before the last two weeks? Master, I think that I serve Master more. I handle more work. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, nine. Master, could it be giving? It's a Buddhist term, not a term, a kissing up term. <laughs> Master, could it be more giving? More giving? Uh, what else? What is it? It's a key concept. The old monk, do you know what that is? What is the secret? Why, why are people improving so quickly? Our people are improving so quickly. Very good. Okay. Here's what happened is that you know, only us, in fact, right now, you know, you know, in, in contrast to when we train people, in contrast to the other, you know, the other people, okay, you know, uh, they're, they're too afraid to lose you. And that's why they don't ask you to do things that you don't like. Okay? Uh, and that's how I was trained by my master. Okay? Uh, so the word there, in order for you to improve, okay, uh, the Buddhist word is vigor. When I ask you to do something is difficult, it hurts, and it's so painful, you still keep at it, it's called vigor. And I've seen people who are so vigorous, they vigorously cultivate, and then they listen to the Dharma constantly. Our instructional talks, the sutra lectures, just listen, and that's how they improve so quickly. That's their secret. Okay, uh, so for example, Ahung, who decided to work, you know, he, you know, to, to help out, to step into, try to fill Mifan's shoes, he had to become a lot more vigorous than before. Am I correct? Yes, Master. See? Yeah, so that's the secret. You see how much we know in Mahayana that we don't say anything unless, you know, I'm, I've been doing this for the last 16 years. This is why you've been improving so much, okay, so quickly. And you got that far, okay, because you have all the secrets. Um, we know what it takes to make it happen. Okay? Unlike people who would sit there in the corner and recite from morning till evening, okay? Or, like, for example, people who recite the Buddha's name, recite whatever Dharma reciting, uh, they don't even understand what it takes to make progress, to improve. Okay? So that, in other words, Without the guidance, they're practicing blindly so they can spend years of their lives practicing and make very little, little effort, uh, uh, progress. Okay? Hmm. Yes, one. 
From Emily, I noticed recently that every time I cut my finger or recently kick my toe on a corner of a stool, causing huge bruises, something happens to one of my family members. The recent toe stub, my brother caught COVID and he's on one kidney. He got really sick even with his booster shot. I feel like I'm in some kind of invisible war. I have braces on my ankle and elbow. Besides myself, Kyle has been having issues with his feet, ankle, knee, and elbow too. I was wondering if my getting hurt first is like some kind of warning that it's my fault. Nah. You're overthinking, you're over uh, extrapolating. Uh, it's not the so. Uh, each of you have your own karmic obstructions, karmic retributions. Uh, you, uh, you are not in a position to be able to affect the others around you. Uh, it happens to me because, uh, uh, because uh, of the nature of my work. But for all of you, it's a more individual, or your obstructions are personal. It's not related to the others. Okay, um, so it's uh, some some obstructions, and uh, and you just uh, need to uh, endure it. That's all. Uh, nothing to worry about. At least you still have uh, some toes. Look at the bright side instead of uh, you know, why am I obstructed? You need obstructions in order to make progress quicker. The more obstructions, the more you, you can, the quicker you can make progress. That's all. No big deal. Yeah. All right. Uh, shall we look into the song enlightenment? Huh? Can we do that? Let's talk about, talk about uh, the song enlightenment here. Since we have nothing substantial to talk about, to discuss, we can talk about the teaching of the sages. How is that? Okay? And so that we can all, all learn from this, uh, this uh, great Chan master, uh, highly revered by the Chinese, um, very eloquent. He wrote the Song Enlightenment here. It's, uh, uh, it's a remarkable piece of work, and so it's worth looking at at it and uh, learn from the Chinese wisdom and s see how it connects with us or how relevant it is for our times uh, and for us in particular. Uh, so slide 15 is current slide. It doesn't matter. All these uh, pieces are um, uh, can be uh, discussed uh, piecemeal, so don't worry about the big picture at all. Chan teaching, if, if for your information, is actually piecemeal. It's rarely one big, big uh, piece at all. Uh, Chan, uh, all the Chan instructions actually, when you look at, for example, the interchanges between the Chan masters, they're very, very short. Okay? Uh, rarely you find a big essay or a long, a long, uh, uh, a long uh, speech. That's only for the people who are confused. It shows in the long questions, in the long answers. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Until every single living being is taken across to extinction. So this is our resolve. Uh, we practice in order to develop the skills, the ability to help every single living being uh, put an end to their suffering. Okay? Uh, it's some real goals. And this is uh, the ultimate goal for the spiritual practices. Why is it important to keep this in mind? Because if you have the proper goals, then you can get very far. If you only limit yourself to smaller goals, for example, what are some of the smaller goals? 
The small goals would be to serve yourself. You say, I want to become an ahat and put an end to my own suffering. I suffer so much. I'm, uh, I need to some relief. And so I practice in order to put an end to my own suffering. And then it's called self-serving goals. And therefore, your results will be pretty small. And this is the secret about Chan. Chan is that we are not afraid to tell you that uh, you should set your, uh, your sights higher and do not uh, sell yourself short. You have so much potential and the key to unlocking your potential is to set your uh, goals pretty high and far. Okay, uh, And that's how uh, what you are about. You have this potential here to be able to rise to the occasion. Look at the success that you had so far in your life. You got the successes you achieved so far because you've been willing to rise to the occasion. Yes? Look, look at your track record. When you're in trouble, when you're in a lot of difficulties, lots of challenges, did you lie down and say, okay, I give up? If you did, uh, you wouldn't be here. Okay? In fact, coming here is in itself is a lot of obstructions. Okay? And so that's, that's the key here. Uh, you need to uh, have the proper goals. Okay? And your goals... Uh, can be bigger and bigger. And the point here, one of the bigger goals here is that you should keep in mind is that when you practice this thing here, not only to help yourself, but to help all living, living beings. And this is the secret. If you aspire to help others, then that's how you help yourself a lot better, a lot more. Whereas if you only aspire to help yourself, okay, then your, uh, your, the results you achieve will be very, very small. Okay? Uh, and so that's number one. Number two is that I want you, when you cultivate, to think about your heart. Now, cultivation is not about feeling good. It's not about, it's not about uh, uh, being smarter and being better in a sense than someone else, and better than others. Cultivation is about making your heart bigger. Your heart becomes bigger through our cultivation because it's filled with, when you, when you work out, you work your biceps, and your biceps grows bigger because what? Anyone knows? You know, hey, people, our temple started exercising now, stretching and working out. I'm very pleased to no end, okay? I'm, I'm tickled pink. Look at all these wimps. They can't even lift anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> Adults can't even lift, you know, a Olympic bar. <laughs> so, but when you work out and you and you build your your muscles, how do you how how do your muscles become big? Do you know? Your muscles grow bigger because you pump blood into it. Okay, you feel your muscles with blood. And you also build, um, part of it is also is to build the muscle fibers. You have more muscle fibers, but primarily you also need to pump it, pump blood into it. Case in point, when I don't exercise, I don't work out because I don't have time, my muscles, I lose muscle mass. When I work out regularly, you know, you could, you know, I can see it shows, okay? But when I stop working out, it really so deflates. 
<laughs> very quickly. So you see, so I real, so the point here is that so in order to be bigger, you need to pump blood into it. So how does your heart get bigger? What we're talking about here is the heart gets bigger because what? Hmm? How does your heart become bigger? How? Because you fill your heart with three. Passion, compassion. Compassion, okay. What else? What do you fill your heart with? You fill your heart with goodness. Where does goodness, where is it stored in you? It's stored in your heart. Don't you know that? Hmm? Huh. So that's how you make your heart grow bigger by behaving, becoming having more goodness, okay? Uh, storing more goodness in your body, and that's where it goes. It makes your heart grow bigger and bigger and bigger. And that's what makes you so adorable to children. Children are drawn to goodness, by the way. Hmm? You don't realize it, but Mi Fan, when, when she uh, works with children, she adores them. You know, say, oh, I want them to be good to children. That's why the children are naturally drawn to her. Okay? Whereas I look at children and say, get away from me. <laughs> That's why they can sense <laughs> the tension immediately. Okay? Uh, so, so, goodness is, attracts. The goodness in your heart attracts people, attracts children. Okay? Mm. And, you know, don't be fooled by me fine smile, okay? Me find my smile, but that's the uh, plastic smile she used to paste on her face. But actually her heart, when she looks at children, I look at her looking at children, I say, wow, this girl really loves children. Whereas I look at Xin Shun, <laughs> look at her children, he says, I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Important for you to realize what's going on. And you decide for yourself, okay? How you, know, how you want to relate to children. Okay? So that's why, as an enticement, the more you work at children, the more your heart is, becomes bigger with, with goodness. Because uh, the children we have, you know, they respond so positively to your good, the goodness in your heart. That's why it grows bigger. And their goodness grows bigger too, increases too. So it's kind of a cool thing. Uh, that's why, uh, 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 who's going to step up now? <laughs> One thing you need. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So, so that's in other words. Master Shehua makes a vow and says, I will save, I will not stop until I save every single living being. Same thing here. When you work with children, you say, I will not stop until I make every single children happier and happier and happier every week when they see me. Okay? And that's the mindset. So far, so good. Uh, next, another vow of Master Shenhua. He says, and I return to my original Dharma nature body. Uh, he's referring uh, to the fact that um, uh, when we born, okay, when he was born, uh, 
And when he, when when we take on human body, what happens to us? We are confused. We are stupid. Okay, except for Buddhas. Okay, Buddhas are the exception. Everyone else, Mahasattvas, uh, Bodhisattvas, Ahats, you know, prior life, when they're born here, take on the body, they all become stupid. We all become stupid. We're all the same. Okay? And uh, remember, in, in it's right now, if you're a Bodhisattva and you die and you take on the next body, uh, you start out being stupid like everyone else. That's the way it is. Okay? Uh, and so that's why he says, Master Sri Han says, I cultivate, I am, was born stupid, I cultivated, I became enlightened, okay? And uh, that's how uh, he returned his original Dharma nature body. He, he came home, he attained his uh, original Dharma nature body that he had before. Is that clear? Because once you're enlightened, okay, next lifetime, it's fairly easy for you to attain enlightenment again. Lifetime after lifetime, you reach that level fairly, fairly naturally. No one can, no one can really stop you at all. Okay? Uh, and that's why it's a real privilege uh, because you, you belong to this special club of enlightened beings, okay? Special club of beings who have uh, accomplishments, whether you are a formless realm of samadhis, next lifetimes, you will also attain that level fairly easily. How's that? Huh? Whereas, uh, if this lifetime you are a great uh, lawyer, next lifetime you may have uh, uh, difficulties making a living. Okay? It's no guarantee. But if you cultivate your spiritual attainment, whatever level you have this lifetime, you will attain it again. And that's why he says, I'm doing all this in order for me to return to my original Dharma nature body. I will, I will, I will have uh, attained this, this uh, Buddha nature, okay? This Buddha, uh, uh, the Dharma nature body that he shares with the Buddha, okay? 17, he got that, by the way. Yes, one. From Apple, recently I noticed that I'm affected when my husband criticizes others. I feel his arrogance and ego that I wouldn't notice before. I'm judging his criticism. What should I do to improve myself? I know I shouldn't judge him. Yeah, what is judging? Right there. This, this, this particular person, hmm. apple and oranges, huh? What is judging? Judging is manic. She's being manic. Okay? This is what people don't realize. I don't know if the therapists and the shrinks uh, teach the patients that, but for me it's very clear because uh, it's a manic response, manic behavior. When you look at people, you have this, the, this judging thing comes up immediately. Okay, especially you Vietnamese. <laughs> Vietnamese people are very judgmental, meaning that most of them are manic. They're so manic. Uh, and, and it's not arrogance, it's manic. Okay, most Vietnamese are <laughs> so manic. <laughs> you know, 
<laughs> and uh, but they, you know, they, that's how they they are. They they get used to it. So, for Apple, when she says, "I look at my husband and now, I'm aware that he's criticizing others and look down, uh, look look down upon others." The husband feels superior, especially now he makes more money, get promotion, and all the stuff. Of course, he's supposed to feel superior and better than others, uh, but uh, that's him. You don't have to judge him. Okay, and so, uh, so just recognize when uh, uh, Apple has his, uh, when he judges the husband or anyone, this judgmental thoughts arises. It's just the manic ghost pulling uh, her strings. So therefore, Apple, you look at that, you, you, this is cultivation. Cultivation is not for you to sit here with me on Saturday morning only. Cultivate is you go home, okay, and during the day you remember, you watch yourself. You say, what is I'm doing that's wrong, that's afflicting me, okay? So uh, you only have to remember now, if you see especially you going, she's the one who goes in Africa, by the way. Uh -huh. Why? <laughs> Safari, I mean... <laughs> It's wrong time to go so far. Um, but anyway, uh, 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 uh. you could say, you know, if I'm on the good side, on the bright side, it's doubly more exciting because you can do go safaris at the same time, uh, fear for your own life. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so when you're not practicing, you're at home in your daily life, what do you do? You watch your affliction, okay? What am I afflicted about? That's what you do. This is what you, the skills you're learning through meditation is for you to watch yourself daily, okay? In your daily life. And you say, oh my God, I'm judging my husband. I'm judging uh, my neighbor, okay? I'm judging my relative, okay? Those judge, judging thoughts uh, are not you. They are from your manic ghosts, especially if it happens too often. It clearly you have this pattern of judging people, okay? And that's a manic ghost influencing you. And all you have to do is Ignore it, okay? You say, oh, here I go again, judging others. It's not me. I'm not going to do anything. I will not fuel that. So you stop right here. The judging thought, the judge, judgmental thought arises naturally. It's not you, and you don't do anything. You say, look at it and say, okay, it's not me. Don't add fuel to it. That's all. That's all you have to do, okay? And especially at Apple's level, she can detect it a lot quicker than people at lower level, and therefore all she has to do is detect it and stop it right there because it's not you. That's all. That's simple, okay? Uh, and all the people who are even high level in Apple, who says, I'm high level, see, and look, Apple is so low level. <laughs> so they being judgmental, uh, tough luck. Uh. 17. And behold, the ancient kind visage of awesome sound Buddha. Mm. And Master Shinhua has his vow. He says, I want to be able to look at the face of this Buddha by the name of Awesome Sound Buddha. Why? Does anyone know why? This is very Buddhist. This is very... Uh, 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 typical Buddhist, advanced Buddhism. Okay, here's what happens. 
Uh, when you are enlightened in Buddhism, when you become enlightened, uh, in Buddhism, you're supposed to go get certified. Okay? Uh, this is what the uh, good Buddhists do, the, the well-trained Buddhists do. When they realize that they are enlightened, they don't jump up and down. They say, I'm enlightened, I'm enlightened. Look, everyone, I'm enlightened. I'm so special. Okay? Don't celebrate. Okay? When you feel you're enlightened, then what you do is you go look for a good new advisor to certify you. So far, so good. This is very important for you to realize that. I know most of the other teachers tell you, oh, you're so special, and therefore, of course, you will become enlightened. Of course, you deserve to be enlightened. But they don't tell them that they're supposed to go get certified, seek certification. And this is the instruction not from me, but from awesome sound Buddha. So this here has says, Behold the ancient and kind visage of awesome sound Buddha means that I vow to become enlightened so that I can go and get certified. And he says, and this is sort of betrays his level. He says, I'm so cool that when I become enlightened, my goal is then to go seek certification from the Buddha himself. I ain't going to go and look at Yung Hua and say, Hey, Yung Hua, certify me. Okay? Yung Hua is too low level. Uh, I will go to the Buddha and seek certification myself. So it, it sort of betrays his, his level. <laughs> you know? He says, You guys are such low people, low-level people, that why would I seek cert certification from you? I seek certification from by looking at the Buddha's visage. Okay? You see how I'm betraying all his secrets now? <laughs> his level is very high. That's why he says, I only seek cert certification from the Buddha himself. And he did. Yes, nine. Master, does that mean that all he has to do is be in the presence? Of no. The awesome he, actually, he actually went and looked at the at awesome sound Buddha and said, We're on a one, please certify me. I think I'm enlightened. And we're on a one says, Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Go back. Go back to work. <laughs> it's nothing to get excited about. Okay? Yeah. And that's how awesome Sam Buddha treated Master Shen Huang, by the way. <laughs> okay, so those are the vows of Master Shen Huang when he, he taught this Dharma door called Song Enlightenment from the great Chinese Chan Master. He says, I'm doing this because part of my vows, okay, as a monk. So he set very high standards for people like me or the future generations, and that's what he's supposed to do. Well, the great teachers set you know, the standards are so high that we all struggle. Remember? Struggle is what? Bigger. You see? That's how they all train us. Okay? They demand more and more of us. Okay? Hmm. So this, uh, now the, the text proper itself, then now we go into the Song of Enlightenment. Have you not seen? Okay? Uh, starts with a question. Challenging. Have you not seen? It's just not like pleasant. May I say, hey, what's the matter with you? Have you not seen? Didn't you see? Okay. What have you not seen? Uh, in Chinese, Chun here is not just you, but Chun here is a word that you address uh, in polite company. 
you call a man Chun when he's like higher status, higher stature. Kung, okay? Kung bất kiến in China, in Vietnamese, Kung bất kiến. Uh, the uh, Chun here is, uh, uh, for example, uh, when you are an official, okay, in particular, if you are like a king, a small king, then you're considered to be a Chun. So it's a title of nobility, by the way. Okay. Chun. Uh, uh, so have you not seen here, you here, you as a person of high stature? Okay. So far, so good. Okay. So the Chinese is very, 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 it has, it's very subtle. Okay. When he, when this enlightened monk, Master Yung Jia, okay, he became enlightened, he wrote this song of enlightenment here, describing enlightenment and, and, and uh, praising enlightenment. He started by, says, have you not seen? You, have you not seen? All of you there, okay, are of a caliber, of a tune, of a high stature. Why is that? Is that exaggeration? Not at all. Okay, number one, okay, uh, if you are willing to look into and read the song enlightenment, you are a special person. Goes without saying that you have enough blessings to be interested in getting the exposure to something called song of enlightenment. Enlightenment is like a cool thing in Buddhism. And therefore, if you have interest in it, you are a person, a special person, a person with stature. Okay? Because typically, other people who are not as blessed as you are would not be interested. It would, they would lose interest and say, oh, I'm out of here. I have better things to do than, you know, this enlightenment thing, this, you know, these people, and they're speaking nonsense. So it has nothing to do with the social stature, okay, but your spiritual stature. He's referring to these people who are following this, who have shown interest in this, are people with stature in the spiritual world. So do not think less of yourself. If you're interested, if you're pursuing this pathway here, you are considered attuned by a, an enlightened Chan master. Chan masters, remember, they don't kiss up to us. They don't try to sell themselves, okay? They don't try to sell Buddhism. They don't try to convince us of anything. Uh, so when he says Chun, when he looks at us and says Chun, meaning that all of you are actually a very special, have a stature in this world, number one, okay? Uh, number two, hmm. number two is that Chun here, uh, refers to the fact that he refers to the fact he's referring to your enlightened nature okay your stature when the buddhas when the bodhisattvas look at you they don't look at a stupid person like i do okay they look at a, a very special person who will be enlightened yes you will be enlightened Yes, you will be enlightened. That's why they look at you with respect. Okay? Not, they look, don't look down upon you at all. If Apple has any wisdom, she would look at her husband who's arrogant as Chun, Quân ơi, Quân. I mean, Chun, oh dear Chun, you know. Dear, dear. Okay? Instead of, oh my God, he's so arrogant. Okay? That's, it's coming when when Apple San Francisco becomes has more wisdom. She will look at a husband who's slightly arrogant as a tune. Okay. Yes, three. Thank you, Master. Uh, 
So it's like the, the class yesterday with the great potential that they see. Yes, here. yes, absolutely. Same concept. That's concept number two is, is that, is that you, your potential is incredible. You just don't know it yet, that's all. People don't know it. It's, you, can't, you can't blame other people who look down upon you because they don't know better. But we who are experts, who are in the business of developing you, helping you develop your potential, we look at you as, my God, you are a chin, you are a chin, you are a chin, you are a chin, you are a chin. Even the children are chins. That's why, you know, they can do anything they want because they're chin. They can make noises, they can scream, they can yell and run around, you know. They're tuned, they have stature. You can't stop them. Do you mess with the, the kings and the, and, 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 and the small kings and small queens? Of course not. They do anything they please. See that? Same thing, same principle. Hmm? Okay? Chin uh, Bujian. You are stature, you have stature. You are a special person. You have tremendous potential. Have you not seen? Okay? Have you seen is, is you able to perceive the truth? Okay? Chien here is, 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 uh, is that to see. To see here refers to your, your, Sense organs, not to seeing alone, but heard. Have have you not heard? Have you not smelled? Have you not tasted? Have you not touched? All the f five senses, all the six senses. Uh, have you not understood? Have you not thought of? Okay, that's what she's referring to. So far, so good. Okay, we stop here today and let's go have lunch. Thank you everyone. We'll see you next time.